Unscripted, we are live. Um, welcome to this latest episode of Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie, and I'm uh, delighted today be, to be joined by Bruce McPherson. Hello, Bruce. Hi, Mom. So Bruce is going to keep me honest as um, I talk you through um, how you can start building conversational interfaces with Google Apps Script. Um, so the kind of thing I'm talking about, I'm just going to share my screen is um, I've got a really simple, um, well, hopefully simple demo, just to illustrate what I'm talking about in terms of conversational faces. Um, so if I go to the right screen, and I can just, so I've just created a, a demonstration uh, add-on here. So I, it, it's asking me, what would I like to highlight? So let me, for example, say highlight uh, roads. Where the is written. See, uh, it's been able to interpret uh, my query, um, so and uh, as a result, highlight the rows where uh, column D is greater than one point five. So. This kind of thing, I, I think, with the growth in things like Google Assistant, Alexa, and all these other uh, tools, I think we're seeing uh, an increased growth in kind of using speech and conversation to interact with things. So how do you go about, you know, you could um, start creating an extremely long reg X where you're, you're extracting things from that. But, you know, there's an, huge number of variations and um, uh, I think you, you're just going to potentially give yourself a huge headache when it comes to regex. The, th the thing that's actually powering this is um, a service called Dialogflow, um, which is uh, recently purchased by Google. So in terms of the, the back end script, all, all it's really doing is um, passing uh, the message we, we input and it's it's just hitting dialog flow, uh, and it's getting it's dialog flow is actually able to extract uh, the the intent from the message. Setting up dial dialog flow is very easy, and so um, for this episode, what I'm going to show you um, how you can do is set up dialog flow and set up your Google Apps Script project, so that you can use dialog flow to start building your own conversational interfaces and enhancing your own. App script projects. So, for example, um, with this highlights row exam, uh, demo I just showed you, um, I've just jumped into Dialogflow. Dialogflow has um, a standard account which is gives you free access. It is quoted, but it's a very generous quota. Let me just actually start a new project. All right, let me create a new agent. So I'm just going to call this highlighter. And so this is entirely web-based, as you can see. Uh, and what Dialogflow does is it combines natural language processing with um, a bit of artificial intelligence and uh, some of Google's extra services uh, to be able to let you do this. So, so in terms of um the setup for Dialogflow, it, it's actually used for Google Actions and Assistant. Um, so it integrates with a number of different services. But generally, what you find you need to do is um, you need to create uh, an intent to uh, what you want to perform and um, some entities that you want to extract from your message. So I'm just going to create a new intent. And I'm going to. Uh, start with some training phrases. So I'm going to give it a name. So let me call this. And so we can just start typing things that we might, or the user uh, might want to enter. So highlight rows where um, column A is And as soon as we start typing these, you'll, you'll see that it's starting to extract uh, some of the entities. So let's try. Uh, 
So as part of this process, um, you need to start thinking about you know, the terms and phrases that user uh, use. Um, uh, so far, it's only identifying uh, a number, and uh, Dialogflow has a number of built-in uh, system entities. So in these phrases, it's only picking out numbers. Let me try a couple more phrases. In that example, it didn't actually detect the number. So we can, as part of the training, we can start identifying these things for it. So this is part of the, the artificial intelligence side. So there are a number of other um, entities within these phrases that we want to extract. So for example, we're in this, we're looking for a column and we're looking for whether we're highlighting the rows or the cells. And so what we can do is create our own entities. So let me just do that. So let me just save this. So I'm going to create an entity called column. And I'm just going to give it a letter. Now I could do all the columns in the spreadsheet, but I'm going to allow it to automatically expand these. Uh, so I'm just going to save that. And let me add another entity range. So we can find cells and rows. You also can add um, variations. So if you know there are variations on saying cells or rows, you can do that. Let me just go back to my training phrases. And what we can do is within the phrases we've given, we can start letting it know. So this is a range. This is a column. And you can see it's now extracting these. So I can do this through here as well. So that is a range. This is another range. This is a column. Uh, so another entity we want to extract is basically the operator. So things like equal to, less than, greater than. So I'm just going to save that. And I'm just going to add a new entity called operator. One of the nice things about Dialogflow is because this is in the cloud, once you've got your core code set up, if you need to modify your training phrases, you can just go into the interface here. And the reason I've specified uh, the reference value as an actual operator is um, when we hit the API, um, it's going to return the operator uh, mm -hmm. value, so the reference value. So we're going to just use that in our code. And you see when I've uh, highlighted an operator, it's not giving the reference value. It's actually giving the text. But we don't need to worry about that. So the idea would be that you can create in phrases. But let's see. When I click Save, it's in sit, it's in saving the intent. And now it's actually training. So every time we we add something, a training phrase, it's it's training it. And we have this handy um, uh, console on the side, so we can actually start testing. So if I do something like I like cells, so it's identified the column C number. It knows it's the cells, but it's still unclear about the operator.
So hopefully after this one, we've got something that's working. It's now it pulled out the operator, but that was obviously something I suggested with. So it's now more reliably detecting these. And I think that's enough for now just to show you the next steps. So um, in terms of integrating this with um, your Google Apps Script project, uh, Dialogflow has a number of options, but the easiest option for Google Apps Script is it has a, a REST API. And you can find the documentation for that online. Within our, uh, our agent, um, the, the best way to set this up to enable REST API access is to um, create a service account. Hey, Martin, before you get started on that, can I can ask you a question about the syntax of the uh, what you were, of the training. Um, yeah. you, 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 so you've got you've got a phrase there, and some of it is specific, like column or range or something like operator, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. You've got other things that are not anything. Um, yeah. Are they mandatory in the sentence? Um, well, let's. It, so if I go cells. Yeah. For example, yeah. H less. Um, or, uh, but actually, it, even though I said cells, it, it didn't understand the range. Yeah. Um, but with more training, so if I add that as one of my training phrases, it actually detected it as a range. So, yeah, I, I, I guess I was asking whether the things that are not, that haven't got a role. Are somehow relevant in the in the training. Um, I think they they provide a reference to the training. I'm not entirely sure how um, Dialogflow you know does its AI side of this. Um, yeah. So it's it, it definitely on their their website. They you know they say that they do nat natural language processing. So I'd, I'd imagine mm -hmm. there there's an aspect of that. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Um, just jumping back, so we've now got something that works reasonably okay. It's obviously limited in some of its operations. So in terms of the next steps, um, what we're going to do is um, create a service account, which will give us some credentials that we can now then use in uh, uh, your Google Apps Script project. And um, you can just hit the API and we can get um, we can send our own messages in and it will pull back the intent. So if I just click, if you click on the uh, cog for your agent, you come to the landing page. And so we can just click on uh, the service account, which it's, and it generally has one already set up. So you can see it's already integrated because it's a Google product, it's straight into the uh, uh, the cloud platform. So we're just going to create a service account. I'm going to call that, uh, let's call it. In terms of the role, um, for us to do uh, querying against their API, if I go down to Dialogflow, we need to specify the role of um, API client. Um, so that uh, will enable us to query our agent and get some data back, hopefully. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a key. And I'm just going to download it. So this is uh, where the, the magic of um, Bruce's Goa um, OAuth 2 library comes in. I've downloaded the key. Uh, I can click done, which I usually forget and then wonder why things aren't working. So all I'm going to do is just dump this JSON into Google Drive. So this basically has the credentials we need um, to access the API. So actually, I just want the name. So I've 
started a project here and it's got some of our code already in it. Um, the, uh, uh, in terms of the libraries, they're, they're basically, um, I haven't installed those, but a quick way for me to actually install these is if I just paste this through, um, we'll put a bit of code in a second. So I'm just going to go to my existing project. This is just an easy way uh, to install the libraries we need. Go and we've got Dialogflow. So Dialogflow is um, a client library uh, I've produced from Spencer's Easton. Spencer Easton has a, a generator for Google APIs. So, and as I mentioned, we've got Bruce, Bruce's Goa in here as well. So um, in terms of Goa's setup, it couldn't be easier. So um, we've dropped in that the file credentials and keys we've got into Google Drive. I'm just going to um, point Goa to that. And Go is going to save that in the script properties. And it's basically going to handle all the token, token generation and renewal that we need. Um, Bruce, is there anything you want to say about Go at this point? It, well, it, it, normally it handles all, all the different kinds of OAuth flows. Um, service accounts, obviously, the easiest one. Um, the important point is that the one off saying you can just delete when you've yeah. once you've run it, so you don't have to have these JSON files hanging around. It's yeah. just a one off thing, and that's the end of it. And the second thing is that the project ID, and notice you've got that as a as a standard um, uh, constant here. You can actually pick up project ID from Goa as well, right? Because it knows it because it's in the uh, credentials anyway. So I'm just going to run Go. So, because um, uh, Go is uh, going to do things like going off to Google Drive, and I'm running this on a consumer account, it's going to it's not verified. So I just need to go through the advanced options um, and just accept that. So it's running the one off function. Um, so in terms of connecting with Dialogflow. The other thing I need to do is we mentioned the project ID in here. So it's just this value here. So I'll just copy that in. And as Bruce says, we can just delete that. I think everything's worked OK. Um, so let's actually. Uh, Let's just do a test function function test. And let's just uh over log and like message intent and we'll send one of our and just to show you what comes back. I was going to do that. And so save. Save. And test. And hit logger. So you can see it's come back with um, some JSON. So uh, it, you, you can see the query text that we've sent in. And uh, you can see the parameters and facts. So here we go. So this is the response we get from Dialogflow. So you know, you can see the text that's gone in and we get the parameters back. Um, so it makes it a lot easier in terms of, you know, it's a uh, dialogue flow, flow has done all the hard work in terms of extracting, you know, the, the values we want, um, you know, in, 
in a very usable format. And that's really essentially how the, the demo is working. So all that we've done in the example is just add a bit of UI. So we're typing in the message. And as I mentioned, one of the nice things about Dialogflow is uh, it, you know, you want to change something. So for example, um, if I have some standard data that's coming in, so it's in a, a standard format, you know, perhaps you've got uh, uh, scientific data or banking data. Um, you can know that column E is going to be delta, D is going to be gamma, C, beta, and uh, D alpha, then you can actually go into your agent and let it know that as well. So this is my pre-prepared agent, which has had, had a bit more training. Uh, so if I go into my entities, and you'll see I've still got things like columns. So what I can do is uh, I've defined some. So this is the other thing about dialogue flow is you don't just have to send in text. You can send in audio from your browser. So let's give this a go. Highlight cells in delta greater than 0 0.2. I think it might struggle because I haven't switched. Oh, there we go. So, <laughs> um, so this is um, the the text that was sent back from Dialogflow that it was able to translate from the audio, and there's an operation on it as well. So it doesn't have to be text input. You can do audio stuff as well. So all the code for this. Um, um, up, in, up on GitHub, so you can have a look. Um, handling the audio is a bit of a, uh, a headache uh, in terms of you know just getting the, the initial code there. But since I've done all that hard work for you, it's a lot easier for you. Um, so hopefully that gives you a sense of what you can do with dialogue. As I mentioned, there's a query input. So as well as the text message, you can uh, specify the language. So uh, I forget exactly how many languages Dialogflow um, is able to deal with, but uh, uh, it's a growing number. I think it's at least 20. Um, so there are other things to do. So for example, um, we can specify session ID. And the great thing about spe specifying a session ID is that you can essentially continue the conversation so for example, uh, I've got a slide here as it's coming close to the season. Uh, and I'm going to uh, ask my little robot to And it's asking me what color. So let's see. And I think it's struggling to add all the snowflakes because I think it's about 2,000 shapes it's just going to put onto this Google slide. There we go. So, let's see. So there you go. Um, I think that's one of the key things that when you start uh, working with conversational interfaces is it, you know, it's thinking about the conversational design aspect of this as well. So um, Google have some great resources on how to use sample dialogues. Um, so, you know, there are a number of core principles, like, you know, when you're having a conversation with someone, like, you know, it, it rarely abruptly stops. You know, usually there's some continu con continuation. So that's why I've tried to highlight in this example of, you know, that, that there is a, a, a conversation going there. So I think when you start um, including conversational interfaces when um, things that you're creating, it's a bit like uh, you know you create your UI to try and be as friendly as possible. When you're adding conversational interfaces, you, you have to think about how, you, how you're going to make that um, uh, nice and a pleasant experience for your user as well. Um, if you're interested in um, how you can use Dialogflow with um, Hangouts chatbots. There's a post I've written on that. So it goes through a similar process of setting up Dialogflow um, and integrating it into uh, 
the Hangout chatbots, you can use uh, Google Apps Script to code those, and that's probably a, a separate program in itself. And um, I think that is all I've got. Any thoughts or reflections? Well, Martin, that was pretty awesome, and I like the way it understood your Scottish accent better than I understood. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think the fact that it is so easy to set up dialogue flow, um, you know, it's that initial step. I, it's still, you know, you have, you still have to deal with the logic. So uh, one of the things Bruce and I were talking about um, before the show started was, you know, I could have used, Bruce has got a great fiddler library that could have done the, you know, the processing of the, the color changes probably a lot more uh, effectively than the way that I've I've coded it. Um, so you know, Dialogflow it removes some of the kind of the um, you know you know it, it creates opportunities, but at the same time you know it, it's got stuff that you've got to still be aware of and work out. And um, for me, working out why why it wasn't picking up the color uh, at at one point, but it seemed to be working now. So. Um, Hopefully, you know, that gives you a sense as well that, you know, it doesn't have to be in Google Sheets as well. You've seen I can integrate this into Google Slides. You can do Hangout chatbots. So um, there's lots of scope within your app script projects to um, add, a, add a bit of um, conversation to it. I think one of the things is that you've you, the training that you do is available on um, apps that you might write on another platform as well. Yeah. Um, so and actually within Dialogflow, um, they have pre-built agents. So you know they've got things like currency converters and uh, you know uh, I think the FAQ one's quite quite popular. So basically, what these have are all your um, intents uh, with your training phrases and entities. So they they might be a better starting point. If you're looking for um, to do something that is aligned with with your goal, well, I hope you've um, all found that useful. Um, as always, I uh, will post resources and links and source code, um, so you can have a go yourself if you want to. And um, hopefully, we'll see you next time on Twitter and Twitter.